Let's see, are the, the numbers are rolling. Please, yeah, good morning. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version. Okay? Please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, at the scriptures we will be reading and musing upon today. Be a Berean once in your life and get the scriptures and read along with me okay all right now there are those who who get the scriptures and follow along and stuff praise the lord for that okay read along with me keep an eye on me because sometimes as i always tell you the mouth will go quicker than the brain and vice versa okay please read along with me our main text that we are going to be concentrating on today is going to be Hebrews 11 in its entirety. This is not going to be a very in-depth, expository look at it. It doesn't need to be. <clears throat> because um, what we're going to be focusing on in Hebrews 11 is there are those out there who, <laughs> who number one, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Uh, 2 Timothy, no, uh, where is that? Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study. Study. What are you studying? A commentary? A book by your favorite preacher? What are you studying? Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, there are those out there within the realm of Christianity who will come to this. Well, number one, if you got a Bible, you're not told to study. Okay? And a lot of people who use the scriptures, Mark the Messenger did this, uh, Kent Helvin did this, where they'll read it, but they stop short at rightly dividing. Mark the Messenger, for example, he's like, study, show thyself approved unto God. Okay? And he'd stop. Kent Helvin, same thing. Okay? Same thing. All right? Rightly dividing. Now there are those, like I said, in the realm of Christianity, they'll come to that and they'll say, well, separate this from like the Hindu stuff and from the Muslim. No, no, it's talking about the scriptures itself. The scripture itself separates itself from all the other writings of men. Okay? And see, that is part of the deception of Rome. Ah, last night, I'll tell you what, I got an even more be better hatred for the whore. I'll tell you that. I'll talk about that later. Maybe. But this is the the points more to the vileness of Rome and what they have done, tried to do to God's word by giving you confusion with the Bibles that don't agree with each other and make uh, make God look like a laughing stock. Because the Bibles, especially like when you get the mess, okay, the message, uh, blends, you know, uh, Aleister Crowley stuff into something that they claim to be God's word. Okay? Alright? The authorized version. Come on. Come on. Even you lost people have to admit this. Even you lost people have to admit this. Don't the... Because what do you point to? I can't understand it. The these, the thousand, and the begats. But funny. Haha. <laughs> If we were to go through Romans 1, 2, and 3, specifically lost man or woman, you sure would understand what was being said to you, wouldn't you? And that's a, that's a, you know, that's a rhetorical question, because you will, you do. Don't give me this, you can't understand it with the D's and the thou. And these are the educated people. These are the people that go to the Jesuit schools, that have the Jesuit degrees. They're educated. They're progressive. Man's getting better. But <laughs> you can't understand these and those. Right. Uh-huh. You don't want to. There's a difference. So, in verse 15, 
And Second Timothy chapter 2. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. It's talking about itself. The authorized version separates itself from the other writings out there, and especially from the Bibles. Okay? The scriptures itself makes distinction from the Bibles. Okay? Even you lost people. You know, it's like, I'd rather read an NIV because at least I can understand it. Yeah, because it's a book written by men for lost people like yourself. The authorized version is written for man. Yes. By God the Father. Who used men's hands to pen it, of course. But the ultimate author of the authorized version is God himself. Okay? So it's clearly talking about the scriptures itself. What does this mean? Salvation changes. God is the same. But the way a man, mankind, is made right with or saved changes within the period of time. Okay? It is not from beginning to end by grace through faith. How can any sensible individual read Genesis 1, 2, and 3 and come away with by grace through faith when they saw God and they were given a clear work not to do and they did it? How can any of you twits by grace through faith? How can you say that? Willfully ignorant. A lot of y'all. And you know what? I liken willful ignorance not purposely making a choice, not wanting to know. I call that stupid. I call that stupid. I do. <laughs> I do. You can fix ignorance. Unfortunately, you can't fix stupid. The only one who can do that is the Lord. The way they were made right in the patriarchal period, right after the Garden of Eden, is not how we are made right today. A lot of these Christians like to tell you that it's the same. It is not the same. And we're going to look at that today. We are going to look at that today. Okay? And you got these people, and this is based off of uh, one of these commenters, um, who I, I'm not going to attack the guy yet. <laughs> Unless he comes at me, if it even is a he, okay? Don't know. Don't know. All right? But it, it, I liken this argument onto the... <laughs> well, read Hebrews 11. It's by grace through faith. Yeah, we're going to read Hebrews 11. Okay? We're going to read Hebrews 11. But I, I, I liken that onto the... <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny, but it's laughable. On to the black Hebrew Israelite. It's full of wonder. Who will say, I can prove to you that the Jews are black. Really? Really? <laughs> Song, of so Song of Solomon? <laughs> um, chapter 1. Verse 5. They, I've encountered this. And you saints is like, are you? This is what they do. I am black but comely. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. I am black but comely. O ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Verse 6. Look not upon me, because I am black, because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. What my own vineyard have I kept not? And they say, see, the Jews are black. <laughs> you, 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 you're stupid. That, I, and I've encountered that. It's, okay, no, it's talking about Solomon, a Hebrew, taken from Shem. From Shem, not Ham, 
not Japheth, uh, a Hebraic Jew. Hebrew means to pass over, or uh, that's encompassed in it. But within Scripture, Hebrew is associated with Abraham, who is a sh from Shem. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's, they come to this. It's not funny. It's just, it's, it's so stupid. It's laughable. Okay? They say, see? Hebrews are black. No! <laughs> no! Okay, they're not! No! Nor are they Caucasian. No! Okay? Alright? It is surmised, and I agree with this, that the... It's a reference on to Solomon's favored wife, which was what? The daughter of Pharaoh, an Egyptian. Now, a Hamitic Egyptian certainly, certainly could be black. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay? A Hebrew? <laughs> Out of Shem? No. No. But see, see, you people don't read the scripture. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. You don't. So you're, it's more easier for you who don't read the scriptures. You go to your little phallus houses and you make idols out of men. It's easier for you to fall for this stuff because of the ignorance of scripture. Because as it says in Amos chapter 8 about the famine that is going on in the land. Of hearing the words of the Lord. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in the, the buildings, they ain't preaching from the scriptures. And if they are, which is rare, if they are, most of them are not really dividing the word of truth. And those that do, seem to fall into the line of hyper-dispensationalism, which is heresy in itself, seeing that there are two bodies, that there's one gospel today, that there's one gospel to the Hebrew, and one gospel to the Gentile. Second Timothy chapter 2, 15 tells you, number one, to rightly divide the word of truth. Number two, that if you don't do that, like that dear Baptist individual who made this comment, which is which sparked this uh, <laughs> number one? Uh, what what Jesus are you? Which Jesus are you talking about? <laughs> the one that's made of three <laughs> persons, you know, the, the the one in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. Which Jesus are you talking about? Okay, if you're talking about the actual Jesus, who is God the Father, one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I, um, and you're saying that it's by grace through faith. From beginning to end, God's ashamed of you because you're not rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? And now, the thing to remember about the book of Hebrews. Number one, it's written unto who? Hebrews. In the collection of the books allocated to the New Testament, Yes, yes. But see, when you read the book of Hebrews, the style in which it is written, the way it is presented, is being presented to someone who is under a form of the law. And see, you got to remember this. During the time of Jacob's trouble, that comes immediately after we, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, are redeemed, caught up, this dispensation, which is by His grace, through our faith, okay, Calvinist, through our faith, okay, all right, you got that. Uh -huh. Once we get redeemed, this dispensation ends. Salvation reverts back to a form of faith and works. Prove that to you, absolutely. Verse, uh, Re Revelation 14, verses 12 and 13. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the capitalist spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. 
faith and works. Faith and works. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, and even them wicked, disgusting, vomitous, vile, free grace, easy believism devils, even they can get this one right. Today, you are not held at gunpoint. You're, you're never, you're never held at gunpoint being forced to do anything God says. you got to make the right choice. Okay? Today, if you go to the Lord on his terms, the elect way of the cross, broken of your self-righteousness, owning up, having contrition, it's your fault that he died, and in fear of him you call upon his name and he save you, you're once saved, always saved, eternally secure, going to go to heaven when you die. No ifs, ands, or buts, or this isn't true. You do not have to, in means of salvation, do anything that God says. You don't. You have to make the right choice, but if you choose to be an obstinate putz and walk your own way and try to, uh, God will be ashamed of you. You'll be saved. You, you'll go to heaven. But in heaven, which is being in heaven is better than being in hell. Amen. But God will be ashamed of you for eternity. We've addressed that in the suicide video, okay, which will uh, be in the description box. Okay? Well, we talk about that. All right? You do not have to, as means of meaning to salvation, salvifically, you don't have to do anything that God says. If you don't, what will happen? Oh, well, your life will be a wreck. You'll be an embarrassment to God and yourself. Your fruit will stink. You'll be, you'll be a mess. You'll be a mess. You'll be put on the shelf. And if you get too bad, God will kill you. Okay? God will kill you. All right? All right? There is a lot of stuff you can lose if you make the stupid decision to not do anything God says. Okay? A lot of Christians have a problem with that. I understand that. But that is the fact. Okay? You can lose. Ward, you can lose health, you can lose grace, you can. Grace is unmerited favor, okay? <laughs> All right? Uh, you, your testimony will be shot, your fruit will be rancid. I mean, there's so, but your salvation is not your salvation, it's His. It is the gift of God, not of works. Works of law, lest any man should boast, okay? All right? But see, in a different dispensation, as pertaining to salvation, faith and works. After this dispensation is over, with the redemption of the purchase possession, it's going to revert back to faith and works in a form of the law because Jesus Christ has already died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. And see, our faith is in Christ Jesus, on him. Our faith is in the fact, as it says in the book of John, it's finished. Our faith is in what he has already done. The time of the patriarchs, under the law, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it will be what God, the faith is revert to what he will do. Okay? Okay? Hebrews chapter 11. If you have a, one, of, one of these things, uh, this is the day that you should use it. Okay? Because we are going to reference some scripture. We're going to read this whole thing. Like I said, don't worry. This is not going to be that deep, even though it could. This is, shouldn't be a two and a half hour, almost three hour video. It shouldn't be. But if it is, it is. I'm not in a hurry. Now, what, what, what is faith? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Dear friend, dear Baptist, easy believism twit, whoever, dear Pentecostal, dear Catholic, dear heretic, 
Garden of Eden, they saw God. How does a voice walk if, you know, the Word made flesh? <laughs> How does a voice walk without a body? You go to Genesis 1, verse 2, about the Spirit. I, 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 the Spirit moved across the waters. Okay? They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. How does a voice walk without a body? And the Word became flesh. Precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, like us, Spirit, body, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Y you who sparked this, you probably believe in one God, <laughs> three persons. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. They could see the Lord in the Garden of Eden. Hence, taking a piece of C4, throwing it at your stupid argument that it's always been by grace through faith, and blowing it out of the water. The kingdom of heaven. Okay, the kingdom of heaven. Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne in Jerusalem. You are going to be actually able to visually see Jesus Christ. During the kingdom of heaven, you're going to be able to see him sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. That's east. Okay? Okay? This is not rocket science. This is simple. You talk about simple, easy. How easy is that? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is not by grace through faith during the kingdom of heaven. That's when the Sermon on the Mount comes into play. Okay? Sermon on the Mount. This is why the devil Catholics love it. Because it's all about works. Because they serve a Christ who is still on the cross. Okay? You don't... The faith is null and void. Why? Because you can see. You can see the Lord. Okay? And me and pertaining to salvation. Okay? What are you going to tell me? What are you going to say? Are you guys even going to say that in eternity? It's by grace through faith? I, I <laughs> praise the Lord, I have not encountered that one. Uh, I haven't. Um, I haven't. You, you never know nowadays with how s crazy the deception is because people are not reading the scriptures rightly dividing they're being fed poison by rome i mean i mean come on if you can try to justify that the hebraic people are black by two verses and ignoring the whole context of the of song of solomon <laughs> then you could go to hebrews 11 and say see it's by grace through faith read hebrews 11 Brilliant. And see, Hebrews is, like I said, written in a style to those who are under the law. Because obviously, with the references, it, it's already, you know, Christ has already died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. Okay? Book of Hebrews doctrinally is aimed at, written to the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? No, and one thing I do got to bring up too. Um, I do not believe that Paul is the author of, you know, the pen, the hand that wrote this. I do not believe that at all. Okay? You got to watch it with that because that can become an argument that will divert from the text itself. Okay? You can't prove to me that Paul wrote, uh, wrote this. I can't prove to you that he did. But the one thing I will say to you, in all of Paul's epistles... Paul identifies himself, even though Tertullus or whatever wrote, uh, penned 
the book of Romans, Paul still identified himself as the source for that of him writing it, okay? Amen. And of course, the Lord himself, the Holy Ghost, you know, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the author of it. Okay, that, that's undisputed. Okay. Why? Paul himself said he was of the stock of Israel, of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews. Okay? Why would he negate to name himself in a book addressed to his own people? Some will say, well, he did without saying, I beg to differ. Paul obviously did have an influence of whoever wrote this, the, the, the man, uh, and the man that wrote it, yes, but the Lord is the one who is the author, okay? I can't prove to you solidly that he didn't, that he didn't write it. You can't prove to me that he did. And see, you got to watch out for that because it's like the shape of the earth thing. Okay, whatever you want to believe about that, that's up to you. Okay, whatever. That could be a distraction. Okay, let's continue now in Hebrews 11. For by it, verse 2, the elders obtained a good report. Now, pay attention. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Uh, do you believe that God created the heaven and the earth? Hmm? The planets? Hmm? The stars? Do you believe that? Well, that's what it says. Do you believe it? I know that's what it says. Do you believe it? We didn't see the actual creation of the planets, of the sun and the stars. We're told in scripture. Do you believe it? That's, I know that's what it says. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Again, Christians know that they got to say yes. But the proof is in the pudding. Verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. For that's Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4. We want verses 1 on to verse 8. Now, Genesis chapter 4 is significant. Why? Because we see an offering being made. Okay, we see an offering being made. It is immediately after the very first dispensation of in Scripture, the Garden of Eden, which, which was works. It was all works. They saw God. They saw God in the Garden of Eden. They were told, don't do that. They did it. And they were booted out. Even Okay, even the, the fake gracers who, you know, like smack a jack, who says that it's by grace through faith in the Garden of Eden. Uh, it's like, dude, how, how stupid are you? How could you say that, seeing that they, it's clear that they were given one thing to do, a work. A work. But then again, most of those guys believe in one God and three persons. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right? Garden of Eden was works. Garden of Eden was works. Period. Period. Hence, taking the C4 and blowing up your stupid little argument that it has always been by grace through faith. That's embarrassing. I feel embarrassed for you when you say a st that the one guy he makes that statement. And I'm like, dude, dude, listen. I, I, <laughs> consider before you shoot out of the mouth such a stupid statement like that willfully ignorant okay or ignorant hopefully the individual watched and got it got his or her head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks okay all right but in Genesis 4 verses 1 and verse 8 and Adam knew Eve 
his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. And Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Hmm. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, flock of sheep, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. Offerings. Okay? They offered freely. Yes, they did. But how can you, how? They, they find a way. They, they do, uh, <laughs> they, they do all kinds of gymnastics. There's no way this points to by grace through faith. There's no way. There's no way. And also, unlike Genesis chapter 3, there is no evidence that they, as in the Garden of Eden, visually saw the Lord. There is no evidence to prove that. There is no evidence to prove that. Genesis 3, okay, hold your, hold, hold your place here in Genesis 4, okay, in Genesis 3, uh, I was on the, the page right there, uh, Genesis 3, there's that, that's verse 8, isn't it, brother? Not on then 1, Genesis 3, uh, verse 8, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of, it, in, of the day. How does a voice walk if it doesn't have body? They saw God. Period. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They saw God. Dude, 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 listen to me. It is not by grace through faith. It's impossible. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. They saw God. God said, don't eat. They ate. It's a work. It's a work. Wake up. Okay? Wake up to the Jesuitical little heresy that you're purporting. Wake up. Okay? Let's continue in Genesis 4. But on to, uh, verse 5. But on to Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And look at Cain's reaction. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance, his bodily, fell. Slumped, I would imagine. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Is it possible that the Lord knew what was going to happen? <laughs> and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, Shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Oh, yeah. And, and, and notice this. Notice this. Okay. That Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Verse 3. Brought of the fruit. In the Torah here that we're reading under the law, it was supposed to be the first fruits, right? The first fruits. The very first. In the beginning, God. Okay? Notice that. And Abel, verse 4, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Don't miss that. Okay? Just saying. Let's continue. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother and slew him. Immediately after the Garden of Eden, this is now the patriarchal period, where Godfather chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, took them out of Shem to establish the Hebraic line where he himself would come through. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? 
All right, this is the patriarchal period. All right, and also too, offering. Today we offer thanksgiving and praise. Okay, our reasonable service is to align ourselves with the scriptures and walk according to the scriptures. Okay, during the patriarchal period. There was an element of works. It was not by grace through faith. Similar. God's grace. God's grace is in every dispensation, dear friend. Without it, we all go up phew, like a puff. Okay? But, see, see, this is what some of you guys don't want to get. Okay? The, the sleazy believers, their faith is in their actual faith. Just like the metaphysical mind science guys, just like the Pentecostal uh, believe and receive, you know, the name it and claim it people, their faith is in their faith, hence their selves. Okay? Faith of the saints is in what has already been done. It's finished. Death, burial, and resurrection in the blood. Here, it was what was going to be. Not finished yet. That 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 dude. That that's so simple. That we talked to little rugrats who got that. How come you, Mr. Baptist, or whatever you think you is? How come you, Mr. Educated Man, if you are a man? How 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 could you not get that? Huh? How can you not get that? Maybe because you're enwrapped in the spirit of that spirit of Antichrist in your little phallus house. Let's continue in Hebrews 11 now. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Taken up. Okay? And was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Okay, what's the next one? Okay. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Okay? During the patriarchal period, the faith was in what he was going to do. Okay? The faith was in God in what he was going to do. Today, our faith is in God in what has already been done. It's finished. The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. Amen, amen, amen. Okay? It's finished. It's finished. Okay? All right? And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, after the redemption of the purchased possession, time of Jacob's trouble, the, that seven-year period, the Lord is going to be coming back within a seven-year uh, seven time period. Okay? They don't know the day or the hour. Doesn't say anything about the year, though, does it? Find it. Find it. The day nor the hour. Okay? Once we're, once the body of Christ gets redeemed, seven years. Seven years. Okay? Seven years. You don't know the day or the hour. You don't know the day or the hour. No, you don't. But you have seven years. Jesus will be coming back. Hence, during the time of trouble. Okay? These are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Okay? And you read about the mark of the bees. Anyone, including Christians, and they're going to be Christians. I personally believe that that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to refer to his followers as Christians. I really do. I really do. And you who get left behind, you'll see. <laughs> okay? But, okay, Christ is going to be coming back. Hence, the book of Hebrews is written on to the Hebraic Jewish people who wake up and realize, okay, he's coming back. Again, it's reverting back to what he's going to do. Okay? Because you read about the mark of the beast, you take that mark of the beast, it doesn't matter who you are or who you think you are. You are going to hell. That's the only time in Scripture where anything that you do will categorically put you to hell. You'll say about, well, what about the unpardonable sin? That's only applicable when Jesus Christ is physically present. As he will be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? This sounds like foolishness to you. Because you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? 
But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You know it's written down, right? You know that. Do you believe it? Well, of course I believe. Let, let, let's see. Let's see. Hmm? Okay? Do you walk your talk? Hmm? See, and a lot of people can put up that facade, but when you don't have that in you, the Lord himself, like just like the Egyptian magicians, okay? They can put on the facade for so long until they always, boom, shoot themselves in the foot. Okay? You can only fake it for so long, dear friend. Do you believe what you read? I know you say you do. Then how come... So many of you Christians don't believe when you get right down to it. So, like, well, that's what it says. But, eh, you know, there's there's a natural uh, um, reason or natural thing for the miracles of Exodus. The miracles in Exodus were done in the natural by the supernatural God, our Father. That that's the thing that they like to blur. Okay, okay. Verse seven. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen yet. Moved with fear. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which he commended, condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith okay by faith but see you'll be like see that's that's grace through faith no it is not no it is not because you're not putting into the equation let's go there come on genesis chapter six he was told to do something there was an aspect of works involved within the patriarchal period it is similar to this dispensation, but there was an element of works. You don't like that part of it, do you? And like we have already discussed and proved in many videos, you can be a, uh, a useless saint and still go to heaven. Yes, you can. Or else the scriptures lie. Genesis chapter 6, verses 13 and 14. All right, Genesis chapter 6. The patriarchal period. Uh, verse 8. But Noah found grace, unmerited favor, in the eyes of the Lord. There you go. See, it's by grace through faith. Verse 14 and 15. Oh, no, verses 13 on to verse 14. Excuse me. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Here's a work. Here's a work, dear guys, dear friend. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. Okay? All right? And... Now look at verse 22 in this chapter. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Now when you go back to Hebrews 11, dear friends, okay, go back to Hebrews 11, looking at verse 7, looking at verse 7, by faith, what was, the, what was his faith in? In God, what he was going to do. God said, I'm gonna I'm going to destroy everything everything. Okay? <laughs> alright? I'm gonna kill all I'm gonna kill them all. Alright? His faith was in God. And Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Yes, he did. Being warned of God of things not seen yet, what God was going to do. 
what God was going to do. It's finished today. Hence, by grace through faith. Okay? Genius? Th this, is, this is simple stuff. It's you guys that are making it so difficult. You really are. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Okay? Because he believed God and what he was going to do. The difference between, one of the many differences between the patriarchal period and the period today, which is by grace through faith. It was not by grace through faith during the patriarchal period. No, it didn't work. Okay? He, he didn't have to. He would have died like everybody else. But he moved with fear. Why? Because he believed God and what he was going to do. Okay? Now let's continue. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. Ah, there's that thing about obedience again. Okay? Today, hey, fake racer, come on. You guys preach this all the time and sending people to hell. Um, if you are genuinely saved, you can be a cantankerous saint and just make a mess of your life and still go to heaven. See, obedience was part of the patriarchal period. If Noah wasn't obedient, it would have been a problem. If Abraham wasn't obedient, okay, were they forced to do that? Were they coerced? No, they weren't. Show it to me. Okay? Noah could have said no. <laughs> it would have not gone well, but he didn't. Okay? See, there was an element of you got to do this. Okay? All right? Today, you go the way, the elect way of the cross, and the Lord saves you. You could be one of those cantankerous, useless saints. And it pains me to say that. But that is the reality. Because remember, it's not of coercion. You've got to make the right decisions. Your testimony will be shot up in heaven. The Lord is going to be like, you get away from me. Yeah, you're up here. But get away. it's better than hell. Okay? But the Lord's going to be ashamed of you for all eternity. And if you're a saint, that ought to bother you. If you're a saint, if you're a saved individual, you're, you're okay with the Lord being ashamed of you forever? Forever and ever? I don't think you're a saint. How's that? Okay? I don't think you're a saint. We have weak moments. But, come on. Come on. If you're going to justify your behavior, your sin, with the, well, at least I'll be in heaven, um, where's the love of God in you? We have weak moments as saints. Yes, we do. I know of one dear individual who had a very weak moment. A saint. Saved individual. Okay? Absolutely. But see, the false springboard off of that. Uh, now, you know, okay. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and went out not knowing whither he went. The faith was in what God was going to do. Okay? Genesis 12. Genesis 12. 1 on to verse 3. And the Lord had... Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country. Hebrew. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, excuse me, and from thy house onto a, <laughs> onto a land I will shew thee. Dude. Okay? The faith in what was what 
was going to be done. Noah built the ark. Abraham left. Okay? All right? There was an element of works still within the patriarchal dispensation. It was not by grace through faith. Okay? And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed in Christ Jesus, of course. Abraham's seed. Okay? Abraham's seed. Dude, like I've said, this, this, is not, this is not difficult. But see, you Christians in your buildings, led by your senses, not even reading the Bible, which come from Rome, you're not hearing the word of the Lord. And those of you that are, okay, you're either hyper-dispensationalists, you know, or you don't rightly divide the word of truth at all. You're against the redemption of the purchased possession. You believe the Christians are going through the great tribulation and nonsense like that. <laughs> By grace through faith, okay? You, you, I mean, you people, you try, um, when you examine this, um, and also note that not one New Testament saint has mentioned. Now, what's the logical conclusion? Well, this was during the process of the writing of the scripture for the New Testament, and that is a valid one. Okay, that is a valid How come no mention of Stephen, at least? Hmm? Hmm? At least... There are mentions within uh, Hebrews 11 of this current dispensation. Yes, there are. Okay? But all of the examples given are Old Testament saints. Why? Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, the Hebraic Jews are going to be reverting back to faith and works, as it were, under the law. See? Hence the way the book of Hebrews is presented. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 9. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. The fathers that is talked about in Romans chapter 11. Okay? Uh, we're going to be in Romans chapter 11, of course. We're talking about this, you, you, you can't get away from that. Um, in Romans chapter 11... Verse uh, 28 and 29. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, the Hebraic Jews are God's chosen people. Even today, okay? They are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. The Father's sake. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? The heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city who, which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid. And that foundation is Jesus Christ. Okay, but which one? Which one? Okay. There's only one Jesus Christ that saves. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's, there's the Roman Catholic Jesus. I should say Catholic Jesus. Because you've got Roman, German, Irish, and the um, underestimated Hispanic Catholic. Okay. You got these uh, flavors within Catholicism. But you got the Catholic Jesus, okay? You have the uh, Jesus of, um, of Jehovah's Witnesses. You got the Jesus of the Morons. Uh, you have the Baptist Jesus, okay? <laughs> All right? You have the charismatic Pentecostal Jesus, okay? You have the Jesus of Islam. 
Okay? All right? There is only one God the Father. There is only one true Lord, God, our Father, Jesus Christ. Amen. But you people are presented with Jesus. A plethora of Jesuses. You really are. Yes, there is only one Jesus. A Catholic don't believe in the true one Jesus. Because the said mention, with the exception of the Pentecostals and the uh, Muslims, and uh, I, I think also maybe the Mormons, I'm not sure about that. Uh, no, no, they, 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 they go with the three person. Uh, except for the Pentecostals and the Muslims, uh, those all generally are one God and three persons. That's not the real Jesus. It's not the real God. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. See, all these references are references to the different dispensation that it was faith in what God was going to do. During the time of Jacob's trouble, their faith is going to be in God that he's going to come back. What he's going to do. Okay? It's not by grace through faith. During the time of Jacob's trouble. That is specific for this dispensation. And also too, there was no permanent indwelling of the Lord himself within the believer in the Garden of Eden, the patriarchal per uh, period, or under the law. There will be, during the time of Jacob's trouble, 144,000 Jews. During the kingdom of heaven, it's not there either. Okay? In eternity, the in permanent indwelling isn't necessary because sin has been gone away with in its eternity. Okay, this dispensation, God, in, uh, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right, all right. All these references were number one in different dispensations under the law, under the patriarchal period. And in those dispensations, the common denominator of faith was what God was going to do. Our faith today, it's finished. Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Not 45, Brad. What are you doing? Genesis chapter 18. All right. Brethren, this, this topic of rightly dividing um, cannot be touched on enough. Can't be. Can't be. If Christianity would start at least Trying to rightly divide the word of truth as led by the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have half the mess we have today. Genesis 18, verses 9 on to verse 15. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? The three visitors, two were angels. One was the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay. A precarnate form of the Lord, okay. People like to say the three. That's the that's the that's the Lord, the Father, and the no. The two were angels, okay. Stop, stop. That is so stupid. Just stop, okay. Just stop. And they said unto him, "Where's Sarah, thy wife?" And he said, "Behold, in the tent." And he said, "I will certainly." What he was going to do. Okay. I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. And you can figure out what that's a reference onto. Okay. Uh, the 28, every 28 day crazy. Okay, thank you. 
Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, <laughs> After I'm waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? The grinders cease, because they be few, and goeth about into his long home. Hmm. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh? Saying, Shall I, sh shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, the Lord, Nay, thou, thou didst laugh. And in Genesis 21 now, verses 1 under verse 5, what God will do. Okay? Alright? Element of a work. Element of a work. Alright? And the faith of Sarah was in what God was going to do. As opposed to today, our faith is in what has been done. See, that's, that's grace through faith. It's finished. Okay? All right? That's for this dispensation. There was no permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost in any of these people. Permanent indwelling. Okay? The blood of the cross was not shed yet. Okay? They were not looking forward to the cross from the beginning of Scripture. They were not. There were references onto it, yes, but they were not looking towards it or forward to it. Like Mr. Stephen Anderson, a lawyer Baptist, liked to believe, apparently. Okay? It, it was not like that. Not at all. Okay? And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised, circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Okay. See, that that is the one thing that you guys, when you, you go to try to say that during the patriarchal period, it's identical. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. The death, burial, and resurrection. How can you miss that? The death, burial, and resurrection hadn't come. They were looking forward to it. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. There was no permanent indwelling of the Holy Ghost. That wasn't there. Now, there are very big similarities, but those gnawing, nagging differences, you guys like to avoid. Okay? Now let's continue. Hebrews 11, verse 12. Therefore sprang there even of one, and of him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Dude, you, you read verse 13. How could you come to this and say, well, see, this proves that from beginning to end it's by grace through faith? How can you be, are you, come on. Come on. Come on. That's like saying that the Hebrews are black because of those two verses in Song of Solomon. What's wrong with you, dude? Come on, now. All y'all who the point is like, see, read Hebrews 11. Now, really quickly, for our instruction in righteousness, reading the book of Hebrews when you're going through a hard moment, amen! The for, our, for us today, instruction in righteousness, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, amen. You're going through something. It's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my bills. Everything's <laughs> falling apart at the seam. 
Okay. All right. Everything's collapsing. It's like, okay, I, I, I need to, you know, you know, strengthen my faith a little. You read this for instruction in righteousness. Absolutely. But to come to this, to try to say that, to prove that in every dispensation is by great... Stupid. Absolutely stupid. And people are believing that, though. Why? Because they're not being heard. They're not hearing the word of God. They're in a phallus house. They got Jesus in their heart. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, where God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. We have mansions waiting for us. How many Christians have you run into? It's like, well, life is going pretty good. Have you run into someone? It's like, oh, gee, I, I hope uh, they, they, they've said, eh, sure. I hope that doesn't come soon. I mean, you know, look at all the... Well, someone purports to believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. When they say, when they know that they're supposed to say, and then they make a statement like that, that's a, that's, I call that a shot in the foot. It's like, wait a minute, dude. Wait a minute. Same thing with the uh, resurrection. Okay? Well, that's what it says. I, I, I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to. Do you really believe that? And like I said, the majority that I've talked with about this, uh, they don't. They don't. They don't. Verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Verses 1 and 2 to start. Not Leviticus. Genesis 22. We, we've, like I said, we've talked about this before, but, you know, throwing out that, uh, read Hebrews 11. It's like, dude, come on, man. Come on, man. Please. You, you're embarrassing yourself. You really are. Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. God tempted them. In the description box, why did God tempt Abraham? Brother, you don't need to be afraid when someone gets that, oh, well, you said God didn't tempt anyone. He tempted Abraham. <laughs> Watch the video. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. And said unto him, Abraham, he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And of course, the thing, the tie-in with the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the begotten of the Father, you know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? God manifest in the flesh, okay? Uh, the Son of Man, the Son of God, Son of David, which we um, which we discuss in the video. Uh, Jesus didn't know. In the rebuke to um, uh, a lying fart guy, Jesus didn't know, okay? We, we talk about that. It'll be in the description box, okay? Jesus didn't know, yeah, 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 okay? Skip now down to verses 7 on to verse 12 in Genesis 22. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, 
the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Again, more proof that it was in what he was going to do. See, it's by grace through faith because it's finished. It's finished. Our salvation is bought and paid for by the death, burial, and resurrection and the blood on the cross. That, you think you got that part of it, but you try to apply that for other dispensations when it wasn't there? You're a heretic. You're a heretic. Okay? You are. In one sense, I don't blame you. Because look at look at look at this joke called Christianity. Look at it. Okay? But when you start to propitiate that lie and call saints the heretics for teaching the truth of God's word. That's where the issue comes in. Okay? That's why I'm being harsh. Okay? That's why I'm being harsh. Verse 8. <laughs> and Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself. Himself. Him. Don't look at me. Look at the scripture. Himself. A lamb. For a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And the Bibles just totally messed that up. Why? Because that's a point to one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Who was on the cross? Huh? Who was on the cross? Hmm? Which one? Okay? Like I said, this is not rocket science. Okay? Pick your pardon, I'm writing down things from the description. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 9. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there, laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched, out, stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. Verse 12, and he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. I have encountered on several occasions, God knows everything. God lives outside of our time, so he can see the beginning to the end. He knew what was going to happen. But what happens is uh, an unbeliever will say, says right there, you say God knows everything. He, uh, wait a minute. The know there is relational. Okay? You Christians, you have a knowledge. Okay? You have a knowledge. You have a head knowledge. Okay? Some of you do. A lot of you don't. But some of you do. Of the Lord. Okay? We, we've addressed this already this week pretty hard. Okay? The no here is relational. Relational. Experiential, however you pronounce that. Okay? The knowing there is not the head knowledge. The know there, for now I know he experienced. He knew Abraham was going to do this. Clearly. Okay? He knew that. Right? God knew that. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's enough. Okay? The experience, the relational knowing is what that is talking about. Because if God don't know everything, if God didn't know, if God didn't know about Abraham, then you know what? Let's let's pack this up and and go for whatever kind of religion you want. Because if your God doesn't know everything, why are you serving him? The know there, dear friend, is relational. Not the head knowledge. Okay? Alright? Like I said, we, we, we discussed that in depth in other videos. Okay? Now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. Picking up at verse 18. 
of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not in Ishmael, you dear Ishmaelites, okay? Even though Ishmael was the firstborn. It's in Isaac, okay? <clears throat> According, accounting that God was able to raise, rise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Dude, when you read this, the come, the things to come, during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to be coming back. It's, it's so, you trying to point to this as proof that it was by grace through faith from the beginning throughout all, it, it falls apart like that. It's, it, the, your argument is stupid. And to be quite honest, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It, it's embarrassing. You know, it really is. Let's continue, okay? By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, and worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bones, what God was going to do. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months, because Moses was, you know, going to be. See, the what was going to be during the time of Jacob's trouble, he's coming back. Today, it's finished. Get that through your head. Get that through your head. It, 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 it'll, be, it'll work good for you. Trust me. Okay, trust me. Okay. Again, come into Hebrews 11, trying to say, because I read Hebrews 11, that proves it's by grace to faith. If I smoked, I'd ask you, hey, share what you're smoking. Okay? <laughs> By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hit three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Oh, in another video, we can go off on that for hours, but we're not going to in this video. Verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had, he had respect unto the recompense with the sea, a noun of the reward. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And again, these, these crazy people will use something like that to say, well, see, they were looking. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? Okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 11. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul making reference because he's a Hebrew of the Hebrew, remember? And were all baptized, identified unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Okay? And all did eat the same spiritual meat and, all, and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that capital R spiritual rock that followed them, and that capital R rock is Christ. Linking one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body onto the God that okay, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay, you gotta remember that. One God. God Himself doesn't change. How God deals with man changes. Salvation changes. You're the heretic saying that it doesn't. 
But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the intent we should not lust after evil things, as they also lusted. You know, if you're a saint, and you're, you, you need to be in the Old Testament as well. If you're neglecting the Old Testament, and your reading of Scripture with the Lord, you are crippling yourself. Okay? You need to read the Old Testament as well. You need to encompass that. Okay? Neither be ye idolaters as some as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play, kind of like the Pentecostals. Never, neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. See, Paul is telling you that God is one God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? All right? And the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. Okay? Jesus Christ, the name means Jehovah saved. Before, the, before he was brought into the world, okay, pre-carnate form of Jesus Christ, okay? All right? All right? It's very simple, okay? Paul is telling you that Jesus who is, okay, Jesus who is, same today, yesterday, and forever, okay, is the Father, okay, and is the God who was responsible for the Exodus. One God, not well, three people, persons who make one. That's insanity. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition. Read the scriptures upon whom the ends of the world are come. Okay? All right. Now, let's, let's go back to Hebrews 11, picking up at verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt. You know, and for our instruction in righteousness, Egypt is likened unto a type of the world. He has called us out. He, uh, and, and you can reference uh, Romans 12, Okay, and this is what the uh, sleazy believers like to encourage you to do, to be worldly. Well, you got to be like the world to win the world. And most of the world has a sense enough to know that what the world does doesn't work. Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove to who? Them. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Okay, let's continue. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Remember, under the law, for the Hebraic Jewish people, okay, and if you wanted to be right with God, under the law you had to go through, through the Hebraic people and become a Jew. You could become a Jew and not be a Hebrew. Okay? You could. Yes. Uh, Esther proves that. Yes. But it's when people saying they are Hebrews. And scripturally, a Hebrew is a Jew. Okay? With the one exception in the book of Esther. Okay? What is a Jew? We did you go ahead and check those videos out if you have any questions about that. Okay? <clears throat> Yes, uh, the Passover was a requirement, okay? Because it was what God was going to do. It's finished today. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, okay? By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians assaying to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. See, the faith that is being referenced in 
Hebrews 11 is the faith that was going, you know, what God was going to do. Again, it's finished. This in no way proves anything of the sort of, well, it's by grace for faith from it. Actually, when you examine it, it proves the exact opposite. Dude, I don't know who you're listening to. I don't want to know. You're crazy. When you examine the text as, as it is, it proves exactly the opposite of claiming to say that this is proof for by grace through faith from beginning to end. It actually proves the exact opposite. That, 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 that's your Christianity for you, man. There's your Christianity. That, that, that's your phallus house church building that comes from Rome. That, that, there you go. There you go. There you go. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. When she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon. Okay? Look at Gideon. Okay? And of Barach. And of Samson, Dunderhead. And of Jephthah. Of David also. And Samuel. And of the prophets. All of those mentioned right there. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah. David, Samuel, the prophets, all under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works. And the book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. Who through faith subdued kingdoms. What God was going to do. Look at David. It's like, Lord, you promised you were going to make of me a great king. Let's do it. He had faith in what God was going to do. Keeping the law. Your faith was in God that he would honor you for doing what? Keeping the law. The law is not a faith. Why? Because it was written down. Come on. Come on, man. Come on, people. Come on. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, uh, reference unto Daniel, I believe. Okay. Quench the violence of fire. The three uh, children. Um, uh, their Hebraic names I always get wrong. Uh, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Chaldaic name, I remember. Okay. Um, quench, the uh, quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. David, skipping around from Saul. Out of weakness were made so strong. Waxed valiant in fight. Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Oh, like the predators or the xenomorphs? <sighs> Women received their dead raised to life again. Now, when the Lord was on the earth at his first coming, yes, he touched the briar and delivered her, the woman back, her son. Okay, but also in the Old Testament, you do see um, in First Kings uh, 17. Also, write these down. We're not going to go through them today. We're not. Okay, just write these down. Here's your here's your homework assignment. Okay, you want me to go through that, don't you? Fine. Okay, but let's read the verse. Verse 35. Okay, women received their dead raised to life again. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. Now that's the tie-in for us in this dispensation as well. But also look at, you know, uh, the prophets, how they were handled by Israel when the prophets told them, you know, like Hosea, uh, preaching contrary to what Israel at that time. Uh, it is said, no proof in scripture, of that Isaiah was sawn in half. And of uh, Ezekiel and Jeremiah, how they died horrific deaths. But you can also tie that in for us, the saints of today, especially when you go to Satan's church and pass out tracts. Wow. Yesterday was a wonderful day. 
<laughs> it really was. It was an extraordinary day yesterday. This whole week, okay? So you can tie that in with today. But the context lends itself more rather to the Old Testament of example. But yes, with that verse, you can tie that in to the, for today. Absolutely, absolutely, for instruction in righteousness specifically. But go to 1 Kings chapter 17, okay? Go to 1 Kings chapter 17, okay? 1 Kings chapter 17. Verses 17 on to verse, oh, um, on to, to close. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, Who, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me my son, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his be his own bed and he cried unto the Lord and said O Lord my God thou hast also brought evil upon this widow hast thou also brought evil upon this woman this widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said O Lord my God I pray thee let this child's soul come into him again the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Okay? And Elijah took the child and brought him down uh, out of the chamber uh, into the house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth. Okay? All uh, right, uh, what was that? Second uh, Kings 4. Second Kings chapter 4. All right, Second Kings chapter 4. Old Testament, and of course, we're not going to cover the ones with the Lord and uh, Peter and Paul. You no, know, Eutychus brought them up. You know, Paul, uh, uh, Peter with Dorcas, the Lord, you know, obvious. Okay, but um, 2 Kings chapter 4, oh, this is, now this is Elisha, Elisha, the successor of Elijah, okay? All right, um, let me see, verses 19 and 20, and he said unto his father, my head, my head, and said to a lad, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Okay. All right. And, we, and uh, I don't want to read this whole thing because, like I said, I didn't want this to be that long. Okay. Oh. Okay. And then Elisha, uh, verses thirty-two on to verse thirty-seven. And when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. When she went in and fe then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. And Second Kings thirteen twenty and twenty one, okay. Second Kings thirteen twenty and twenty one. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And, oh, and by the way, Elisha died of sickness. Guess he didn't have faith, huh? And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying the man, that behold, they spied a band of men. And they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. 
the de and of course you can tie that in with uh, Ezekiel's about the dry bones, about a dead body touched the bones uh, and brought back to life. That kind of, I mean, there's so much you can tie into that. But in death, the bones of Elisha brought a guy back to life. Okay, so go back to Hebrews 11. Okay, Hebrews 11. All right, let's finish this up. Uh, let's read verse 35 again. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And the resurrection, of course, is mentioned in the res resurrection of the dead. So like I said, 35 you can tie in with today. Yes, you can. Okay, but we read the whole context as we have. It, it proves the opposite of you trying to say, you read this to prove that it's by grace through faith in every dispensation? You're nuts. You're nuts. The scripture proves you wrong. And others had trial, the Lord Jesus Christ, of cruel mockings and scourging, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. Also Paul. Okay? They were stoned, Paul. They were sawn asunder, apparently as Isaiah was, and also other of the prophets. We're tempted. Uh, Elisha, uh, or Elijah, James talks about that, okay? We're slain with the sword. Uh, Zechariah, okay? The son of Jehoiada, <laughs> okay? Syllables. That's an inside thing, okay? They were stoned, they were sawn asunder were tempted, were slain with the sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not wor of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And remember part of the punishment of Israel for not believing that God was uh, again in uh, numbers. Where the Lord, you know, the first time to get the promised land. It's like, there's a promised land. I'm going to give it to you. Trust me. Let's do this. The faith was, was to be in God, that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. Give them the promised land. Okay? It's another great example of it. All right? So they wandered around for 40 years. Okay? All right? And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Received not the promise. Now the promised land, yes. We are promised today. Eternal life. Once saved, always saved. The examples we looked at in scripture here. All and these all having obtained a good report through faith. Believing in what God, having faith in what God was going to do. Received not the promise. The promise of God is what? We come to him on his terms, the elected way of the cross. He saves us. We're sealed into the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. What do you do with verse 39, Jack? That ver one verse. You say Hebrews 11 proves it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. What, 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 what do you do with that? You read Hebrews 11. Okay? Rightly dividing. Dude. Dude. <laughs> Dude, come on. Come on. You, you're making uh, a rear end of yourself. By saying that, oh, read that, it, it proves it's by great. Verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Romans 11. They without us should not be made perfect without us. Romans 11, verse 6, on to verse 15. And if by grace, 
then it is no more of works, works of the law, the works that we have already examined, okay? Yes, you're right, the law was not written, binding or whatever, written uh, during the time of the patriarchs, but come on, we've proven, it's proven that works, obedience was a requirement. Obedience was a requirement, okay? You come, the, you go the elected way of the cross, he saves you and seals you, you're not being forced to do what God says. They weren't forced back then, but during the patriarchal period, there was that element of works with obedience, or else, but, you know. And if it be by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. God's grace is in every dispensation. Okay? All right? By grace, through faith, is for us today. Period. It wasn't in the Garden of Eden. It wasn't during the patriarchal period. It wasn't during the law. It will not be during the, uh, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, nor the kingdom of heaven. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath attained it, and the rest were blinded. Now, remember, election, the elected way of the cross. Okay? Israel is the apple of God's eye. Okay? You're elect when you go the elected way of the cross. It is not this stupid Calvinism stuff. Okay? We'll put the Calvinism video in there. If you don't want to watch this stuff, the links, and you're still going to be ignorant, willfully, about that in the comments section, ain't got time for that. Okay? Ain't got time for that. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. See, coercion. No. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. They have made the choice to reject God for now. Not individually, but Jewry as, in, as it, in the entirety. Not individually. Remember that. And David said, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap and a stumbling block, and a recompense with the sea unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, Japheth, Ham, okay? And those of Shem, remember, the Hebrew is taken out of Shem. They are of Shem. But you know you got the uh, you got the Asiatics like the the Korean, the those from Thailand, um, China, Japan. Okay, and you know what's interesting about the Asiatics when you talk with uh, those of of Shem like that, um, you see I've noticed a lot of similarity in their stubborn pride about not wanting to accept gospel of Jesus Christ okay and just like the Hebrew you know you you speak to a, a Korean or a Chinese man uh, who are zealous for their traditions um, it's, it's kind of like talking to a Hebrew okay why because they are both derived of the same Shem but remember the Hebrew is taken out of Shem don't forget that Okay. Not of Ham. Not of Japheth. You can be a Japhethian Jew. Yes, you can. You can be a Hamite Jew. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's impossible to be a Japhethian Hebrew. It's impossible to be a Hamitic Hebrew. It's impossible. Okay? I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. 
but rather their that but rather through their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Is Israel the Hebraic Jew jealous of that? Up to dosage, buddy. Up to dosage. Up to dosage. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? Amen. There is a, it is a sight to behold when you see a brother a Hebraic Jew who <laughs> I understand this uh, they's like I'm not uh, no I'm a Messianic Jew okay I, I that, that's fine that's fine uh, most of the Hebraic people that I have encountered they have a rightful problem with being labeled a Christian okay for many reasons but um, that that zeal that is that like Paul he had uh, that zeal there, but at first it was misguided in the wrong place. The Lord gets a hold of him and saves him. Paul puts that zeal, that uh, Hebrew of the Hebrew, zeal into the right area. Okay? When you encounter a brother who is a red Jew and of the church of God, that's when you say, you go, I ain't saying nothing. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Preach it. <laughs> Go right ahead. I'm just going to, wow. Wow. I mean, that, 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 if you've never seen that in action, if you've never seen that Hebraic zeal actually focused on the Lord in a witnessing say, wow. 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 You, you think I get up in here. <laughs> I do. Huh? You know. You, you you think I, I you know you think I got sometimes you know the stones say I do yeah sure, um, like I said, and I also like I said also equate that also onto like a lot of our enemies who have all this zeal for Satan, if the, you know the Lord saved them and that zeal that they used to attack the body of Christ were actually towards the actual Lord wow wow. Amen, brother. <laughs> now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. The emulation meaning that they would follow the example of his faith as going to the Lord, not be a carbon copy of Paul himself. Okay? Paul never taught that. Paul never preached that. Paul gave the example of his faith. Okay? That is the example of Paul. He is our example. We are, to, you know, how Paul followed Christ. Okay? To the Jew first, and also to the, Gen, uh, to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. You read Romans chapter 1. Okay? Alright? To the Jew first. And also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay? For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be? But life from the dead. Israel reborn. That's going to be the context of the kingdom of heaven. And that is it for this little video. People, <laughs> Hebrews 11 is incredible. Incredible example of people's faith in something that was going to be done. The book of Hebrews is written for the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. And during that time, it's the faith in that he's coming back with us who go up. Comprende? Okay? 
for you to say, for you to say, you read Hebrews 11, that proves by grace through faith from the Garden of Eden to the Kingdom of Heaven, that's heresy. You, we just read it. it. The text itself proves you wrong. You're wrong. Why? Because the scripture is right. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? People don't want to hear the word of truth anymore. It's all sensual. They're in their little phallus houses. Like, the, like that Hispanic Catholic woman I encountered last night tracting. You know, coming up to me. You can't do this. So, oh yeah. Where is that written? I don't see no sign there. Where's that written, woman? Huh? It's like, I, I'm going to show this to the to them. It's like, please, go ahead. Show them the track. Go ahead. It's like, I'm going to call the police. It's like, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Whatever. Whatever. Yeah. And then she going around to the cars that I put the tracks on, taking them. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't get them all, woman. Yeah, I can. Pride. The Hispanic Catholic. There's, there's Roman Catholic, German Catholic, Lutherans, Irish Catholic, Hispanic Catholic. The Hispanic Catholic, I think, is kind of a sleeper unit that um, Rome will use. Uh, that, 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 nothing against the, the blessed kindred of the Hispanic people, nothing against that. But see, the religion of Rome the variation or the flavor, then Rome tells you that they're all the same. No, they're not. No, they're not. There's a big difference between an Irish Catholic and a Hispanic Catholic. There are differences between a German and a Roman Catholic. Okay? Even though they have that same line of heresy. Okay? But I do believe that the Hispanic Catholics are going to be kind of the sleeper cell unit, if, as it were, that Rome is going to utilize in the last days. And before he's like, oh, Brad, you're being a kindredist. Um, remember, I'm a Spaniard. And the Hispanic, I believe, is um, a, a hybrid of Ham and Japheth. Ham and Japheth. Okay? Because the Aztecs were Hamites. Okay? But that, that, that's different. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you do, please start rightly dividing the word of truth. Please. Because you, you'll, you'll free, be free of these ridiculous things. You know, read Hebrews 11. That proves by grace through faith throughout the end. No, it doesn't. It proves the opposite. It proves the opposite. It proves the opposite when you read Hebrews 11. It proves the opposite. Dear brother, sorry I didn't get a chance to get a hold of you today. You will see this. I, I'm going to try to get a hold of you tomorrow on Skype here, okay? Just so you know. Got to get, gotta get that one. And uh, the one uh, brother from, um, uh, from Portland or whatever, I'm going to try to get a hold of you too if you see this. Love you guys. Thank you for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord.